question then, should it be a degree that you learn as a student? To, you know, um, much like if, you know, I, I went to college and I have a bachelor's in, in, in arts and science of, of marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, should massage be a degree? Because if you want to raise the level of teachers right, to that expectation, and maybe, maybe that's controversial, so it's sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, so but I, you know, you want to, I, I agree, raising the level of, of teach the teacher, mm -hmm. well, you know, not saying that our educational system is perfect, but coming from a family of teachers, mm -hmm. a whole family mm -hmm. of teachers, principals that um, learned early on, there are some good basics that are taught on how to teach, right? If someone wants to become a teacher of mathematics, they have to, they have to complete a level, a degree level of, of education. So is that really what you guys are talking about? And if so, then shouldn't there be a degree for the massage therapist? Well, but not only massage <laughs> therapists. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But, but massage therapists are not the only teachers in massage schools. There are right. a lot of people That's that right. come in that are Lots not massage therapists. Lots of people that are not therapists. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and, you know, from someone who got my degree 30 years ago, um, <laughs> I believe people should have. But I, I don't necessarily okay. think that. But I think that as long as you have the competency, how you got that competency, See, I, 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 but that's personal. I mean, I don't necessarily yeah. believe a piece of paper that you went to a college means anything. Oh, and I, and I wasn't trying to say that, but I was saying, you know, sometimes you have to, in creating standards, mm -hmm. sometimes it helps to, to have that level, to raise it a little bit. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying one's better than the other, right. just asking a question. So. Yeah, and I, I think that would be, a, I, think that would, <laughs> I think that would definitely be one option. Sure. But I would like to make the other option for people maybe who've been teaching for 20 years and don't have a degree, teaching degree to be able to meet those standards without sure. doing that. Yeah. Yes. So I'd like to talk a little bit about okay. tiered credentialing okay. and, the, and, the, and the idea of a degree program for Mr. Service. Okay. Because this is just... Right up. And actually, that was one of the things <laughs> on the <laughs> side of the time. It's like the amazing carnage. Yeah. <laughs> Tiered program. Um, I uh, uh, have come to the, you know how they say if you never change your mind, how do you know you still have one? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you never heard that? Well, I, have heard that. Heard that. I love it though. So, um, I actually can, can claim, I don't actually change my mind about things very often, but I have, I have come around on the, on, the, on the tiered credentialing issue, and I've come around for a whole bunch of reasons having to do with what I've, what I've learned and the way I've grown since I've gotten involved with the Massage Therapy Foundation. So, so there was a time when I really felt like our profession just could not handle tiered credentialing. You know, we are, it is so hard to organize massage therapists, it is hurting cats to get people to show up for a meeting, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, like uh, uh, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, but that aside. Okay. Um, but as I have seen more about what the potential for our, for our profession is, if we make the opportunity for the people who want to, to pursue advanced education but not require it um, you know and I, I want to come back to that in a second but what I truly believe and I, and I speak to this out of years and years of being a teacher some of the most gifted the most spiritually moving massages I have ever received have been from people who could not do the work who had trouble reading who had trouble writing who for whom the lecture part which is always my part of the course was the hardest the most difficult Part, and they gave the most gifted and the most uh, the most whole kind of massage, and on at on, at the same time, straight A students would give the clammy hand, totally disconnected. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with no, but there really is something wrong with that. If you're if you're cut off, you know, from here down, it's really hard to make the kind of connection. With client that, that we hope that people make to establish that therapeutic relationship, which is where everything happens. So I'm a, you know, I'm a straight A student. I teach lecture classes. I'm really into people who, who are into the books, right? But when it comes to massage, not everybody's going to be there. And, and, and being really into books does not make you an excellent therapist. That's true. So I'm, I'm determined that however our, our, our profession moves forward when we think, of, when we think about 
the evolution of our, of our education, there needs to be space for people who are not bookish to do their work and to do it brilliantly, as long as they're working safely. But what we're missing now is space for people who are bookish. Right now, if you want to get an advanced degree having to do with massage, really you're talking about a master's and a PhD in public health, or in nursing, or in psychiatry, or in gerontology. And that's, that's that, those are the only advanced degrees I know of. It is time for us to have a bachelor's, a master's, <coughs> and a PhD in massage therapy. And, and not for everybody, but for the people who want to do it. And the reason that I am so passionate about this, <coughs> um, can you tell? It was so passionate. You're so I know, because I have been known to get up on chairs. Tell us what you really yell about. It. Yeah. 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 Is that we are, we are about to miss the most, we are about to miss a generational opportunity um, with the overhaul of the healthcare system. Okay? Yes. New emphasis on wellness and prevention. Massage deserves a seat at that table. We absolutely can play in that playing field. But if we scream and kick and pound our fist and say, we need a seat at the table, and people with doctorates look at us and go, 500 hours? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You know? Um, and so we're delighted that our, that our profession is, is, um, is, is respected right now by the woman who's the head of NCAM. National Centers for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Her name's Josie Briggs. She gets massage. She comes to massage meetings. The foundation's had a good working relationship with her. Other organizations have, have had good working relationships with her, and she's interested in what we do. The other thing that's really supporting us is public. The public uses massage. Mm -hmm. The amount of money spent on massage therapy research is not um, commensurate with the amount of money the public spends on it. And the reason for that isn't that there's resistance to spending money on research for us, is that there aren't enough people who know how to write a good grant proposal. And the reason there aren't enough people who know how to write a good grant proposal is that there are no degree programs right. for massage therapists. Yes. So this is about education, it's about policy making, it's about integration with other healthcare providers. Um, it's really the whole thing, uh, and, and, and ultimately it's about tiered credentials. Well, and, and that's one way to get respected at the table. Right. You know, bring it to the table as much as I, I, I love the liberal arts section of it, right? It's theater liberal okay. okay, okay, so I, I respect that, and, and you can't have a massage without it, I get it. But in order to play in that field, you got to follow some rules, and that's mm -hmm. just the way it is. So. Yes well, and no. There's, yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to this a little bit too yeah. on, a, on a much more practical level. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, let's bring it back yeah. down to yeah. let's bring it back down to starting therapists. Exactly. I have had the opportunity this spring twice to sit on panels or to attend panels where people who hire massage therapists are talking about what it's like in this field today. Mm -hmm. I attended a meeting with 1,500 massage therapists, massage envy uh, franchise owners, mm -hmm. and what I heard over and over and over again. I would hire 30 people tomorrow if I got somebody hireable. Right. And what was what was hireable was not about the skill in their hands. It's about the skill in their mouth. Right. It's right. about the ability mm -hmm. to speak in complete sentences, <laughs> to fill out an intake form, right. to have an intelligent conversation right. with somebody about their health. Right. Right. So we can teach technique all day long. Right. But if our students can't communicate, and that's liberal arts, yeah. you know, yeah. that's um, well, that's, that's they, then they are not higher yeah. levels. Okay, so now this. <laughs> what what Ruth said. <laughs> <laughs> but also we uh, that recognition is there in many many ways already um, with with um, ACAC. Uh, oh, now we ha now you have to say what it stands for. Good luck with that. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, can everybody put together the ACAC acronym? Academy? Academic Consortium? Alternate Healthcare? Health? Something. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so, and, and, and massage yeah. has a role in that already. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take you back 30 years ago. Way back machine. Way back machine. When there were 120 hour courses. California, 120 hour yeah. course. 125. I worked with a doctor for quite some time who hired me to work on his patients. Well, I wasn't even licensed, let alone had a whole lot of training. He didn't have one. <laughs> but he knew the value. He was a holistic doctor way back when, mm -hmm. and he knew the value of massage. 
So I, I think that, yes, we do want to have other options for people who want to go that way. Uh, but I also think that we need to have that confidence and that faith and that trust in what we do, no matter what the letters are after our name. The letters help. They, I'm not going to say they don't help. But the letters alone won't make that difference. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Uh, because no matter what it is, we're not going to have the level of an MP after our name. Not too many people that want that. Think that. I don't think that anybody would disagree with that. And what you know, Ruth said about some, the, the most gifted massage she ever had was done by somebody bookish. What I still think is that there aren't enough of us who are standing up and saying, it may not be for everyone, but you know what? There is a segment of our profession that needs to step it up yep. and accept those higher standards and stop trying to get everyone to agree because we're not going to, mm -hmm. right? And let, I don't want to say weed from the chain in that way, meaning that that's a bad thing, but let that natural let it, separation. Let it short it out. Let yeah. that natural yeah. separation happen. I mean, I love the nursing model. I do too. I love the nursing model. You know, you've got a nurse practitioner, you've got a registered nurse, and you've got an LPN. Mm -hmm. And they all have a great right. vocational opportunity for themselves. Right. And they all spend different amounts of money for their education. And there's some lousy nurse practitioners, and there's some really gifted, fabulous, uh, LPNs that probably offer better care, but they have a structure, and everybody knows what it is. Right. They can cry and scream about it, but it's, a, it's somehow mutually agreed upon and portable between the, states. The only place, and this is what kept me from being a big fan of tiered credentialing for a long time, the place where I get stuck there is as a consumer of healthcare. Mm -hmm. I don't know the difference between an LPN and an RN. Mm -hmm. Right? Really? No, truly, I don't. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had that much interface. With that, you know, with that community, but, and so, and so I, mean, I think parents, it's not do fair. Do you really know the difference? I mean, there, every I mean, there's so many pe ways people do massage, right? So, I mean, but if we're gonna say, if we're gonna put let use letters or use name registered versus licensed versus credentialed or you know whatever, right. it's not fair to expect the public to know who can give them the kind of care that they need. You know, when I get letters from people saying, um, my mother's just been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, can the massage therapist at her hair salon, you know, help her? Probably. Right. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I mean, are you going to go to your hair salon looking for your mother's care for a terminal disease? You know, it's, it's, um, it's frustrating to me that people already don't know really how to use us. Yeah. Well, so, you know, I, I think, I, I got to make a point about that. I think it's up to the massage therapist. If you invest in your own career and you invest in your future, you invest in your education, you should be able to open up your mouth and invest in marketing yourself the level that you've been educated. Beautiful point. You're right? absolutely right. So mm -hmm. when you look at it that way, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. This profession has to take responsibility for where it is and where it's going. Yeah. Do you know in the, in, in the new health care reform, in the non-discrimination clauses, we have acupuncture and chiropractic mentioned. Massage is not mentioned in the anti-discrimination. Because again, and let's go back to the big controversial picture, we don't have licensure in all states, we don't have portability, we don't have standards of education, of schools, of licensure, of, of, of. So if we want to be taken seriously, we as a profession have to take ourselves seriously. And yes, let's let it flush out. If you I love want what to be you said, you know, if no one is ever going to agree about this, so don't the have people to. who want to pursue it, pursue it. And there are a couple of schools, one in the US and one in, in Canada that I know. They're currently pursuing bachelor's degrees. Yes. Um, for massage therapy. And there's another degree program out there. It's more of a program. I don't know how many of you are aware. Parker School of Massage, mm -hmm. which is part of Parker yeah. College, mm -hmm. yeah. has a medical massage program yeah, right. with an internship at a hospital. Yeah. They stepped in, they started the massage school, and now they're stepping up as a university. And the more schools and the more entities that we have doing that, challenging therapists to become better and more educated, mm -hmm. the more we're going to elevate ourselves and then educate our consumers, the patients, that we have this skill set and we have this quality. And it will be a process, it will be an evolution, and it will all work and itself out. And it's generational. Right. It's, you know, it's Tina's students who are going to take advantage of that. Absolutely. But yeah. we also have to not make the other people wrong for not choosing that model. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 But there's a lot of that happening already. You know, there's so much stigmatizing about, about where you work and how you work. I'll tell you, I put it on Facebook the other day. The best massage I ever got was in an airport spa. Yeah, it was so good. It's the therapist, not the location of the table. It's the therapeutic relationship. Mm -hmm. It's the ability to be. Yeah. 
Well, it's about 8.15. Oh, wow. past our, our time. Fantastic <laughs> <laughs> discussion. Everybody, keep being controversial. Keep blogging. Everybody else, keep coming back to Massage Today, to the Women in Body Work Business blog. And thank you, everybody, so much for coming. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you.